there that night. When really they're the new elders. Okay, I'll feel you. I'll feel you. I appreciate that, Queen. Thanks for tapping in, and I'm going to see you in Charlotte soon. All right. All right. Salute. Yeah. Be blessed. Bye. Who tapping in next? Who tapping in next? Who tapping in next? She said the elders be disrespecting the youth, but do the youth be disrespecting the elders? Are black women competing over men or are they competing over power? Comfort towers going once. Comfort towers going twice. Comfort towers. How we doing, Sister Comfort? I am okay. How are you? I'm doing all right with that beautiful afro. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> I wasn't Talk ready. To me, Queen. Okay. What's your thoughts? Um, what's the question? Black women. Two questions for you. Number three questions. Actually, three and one. They kind of go together. Why aren't black women organizing amongst yourselves as sisters? Y'all dealing with femicide, infant mortality, domestic abuse unalivings, homelessness at an all-time high with single black mothers. Why aren't black women organizing and coming together more as women? Why are black women in such competition with each other? What are you guys competing over? Are you competing over men? Are you competing over bodies, looks, status? What is the competition about? And the third part of the female question is the elders. Elderly black women who I refer to as the queen mothers. The queen mothers feel like y'all young queens be disrespecting them, ignoring them, not showing no reverence, oh no humility. What should take on the competition? Respect for the queen mothers. And why aren't black women organizing and unifying amongst yourselves? Wow. Those are great questions. Um, I saw a lot of awesome comments. I made a few. Um, so I can only speak for what I've observed and what I've experienced. I find that there's a lot of this in our community across genders, age, generations. Like we're just very scattered and we know that that's like a result of systemic intentional attacks on our community. And so like you already said, it is a psychological concern um, that we can't seem to come together. And I have some of the same questions um, that like, why are we so in disarray and like, why can't we come together? I find that um, we don't have, poor, my observation is that we have poor conflict resolution. Okay. Um, so like whenever there's a conflict, um, communities and relationships tend to fall apart that are coming together. So I don't really know how to fix the fact that like communication is so difficult, um, but I'm here for the same reason. I'm here to like learn, communicate to one another and problem solve together. Um, but I agree that if we came together, you know, and stopped fighting and bickering over stuff, you know, we could really make some shit shake. Um, and I can see people in here commenting of like, what space are you creating? I mean, I think we're all here because like, you are creating spaces for us to have these conversations. So thanks. Um, but as far as I don't feel like I can speak for Black women, obviously, um, I'm a part of the community, but I feel separated times because I'm also Latina. I'm mixed. And so sometimes I'm like marginalized and push up like I can't be a part of the conversation. But it's like, I think it's important for us to all know when we can and can't speak to something that we did or didn't experience. Okay. But we have to listen to each other and come together and consider perspectives. And sometimes that's hard. And I think that the oppression Olympics, you hear me talk about that, yeah. like everyone's in for like, well, I had it worse than you, and that's not what I went through. And it's just like we can't actually hold space for each other and listen to each other because there is that constant competition, whether it's a pain or suffering or um, knowledge. Like I you, um, and I feel like someone said like it's an ego thing. So I guess that I don't know. Okay, so tell me about your Latina background. What is mom? What is dad? You're yeah, obviously African. I can see that. So that's not the yes. issue here. I just wanted to know the, the beautiful African Thank you. Afro. I'm loving it, my sister. I'm loving it. Um, so who, which, which parent is Latina? Um, Latino and like indigenous, um, my father. Okay. He's from, what's his nationality? I'm Puerto Rican, black and Puerto okay. Rican. Okay. 
okay, which parent is black? My mother. Mom is black and dad is from Puerto Rico. Yeah. Oh, okay. Which means he's pretty much about 75% African himself, if you know he's the history not. of Puerto Rico. Okay. He, so he's not, no African blood in your dad? I don't think oh. so. He's like white and indigenous. Okay. So he's, okay. So he's, so he's like Caucasian Latino. Indigenous and white. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Cause, okay. So, cause when you're dealing with the Latin, you got your indigenous. Then you got your, your Caucasian Latinos. Mm -hmm. So those would be your <laughs> colonizers who came over. Mixed. Okay, say that again. We stand just with dad right now. I just want to be clear. He, so you're saying he's not, okay, he's mixed. But white. He look white, but like he's okay, he look, okay, so he would be indigenous and Caucasian Latino. Mm -hmm, he's mixed. I got you. Mm -hmm. So he's indigenous and Caucasian Latino, but mom straight up black. Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay, so you're definitely one of us. Yes. Question. Uh, your decision to wear your hair natural. I'm your sorry? Decision, your decision to wear your hair natural, where did that come from? Why are you so comfortable in your skin? Have you always been natural? Is this a new thing? Why are you natural? Oh, and do gosh. you think black women make too many excuses not to be natural? That's two questions. Why are you natural? And do you think your African sisters make too much too many excuses not to be natural. Um, I was raised to always be natural, so, so your I mama wasn't like gave you that. Your mama gave you that mm -hmm. black pride. Yes, <sighs> but she didn't really like be so explicit to really teach me about my history, and that's something I'm on a journey of learning myself. And I feel like a lot of us relate to that, where some of us were not really taught true history. We like went to school. So like whatever they taught us in school is what we learned. But she did always, she was always natural. You know, at, when I was a kid in the 90s, she had natural hair or she had locks. So I, that's just what I'm used to. It wasn't really a big decision. I do remember like in high school, wanting to straighten my hair, of course, like what the sister was saying before about, you know, the pressure that we feel to change our looks to be accepted accepted and i know the crown act is like that's cool and all but it's like why the why does it have to even exist and like that's crazy like that it should have to be an act for us to just exist in our skin and so in the conversation about like your natural hair i don't know i just think that i'm like a naturalist so i just want to be you know less chemicals less whatever like just try oh. to be in my I'm indigenous, as I said, so like that's important to me to be one with earth and like connected. So that's something that I got from my abuela for she was indigenous. And then um, my mom, she was always natural. So that's just how I am. I'm, I am, you know, indigenous and black and I'm proud of every part of who I am. Um, and why I cannot speak to why other people choose not to wear, but I agree that I feel the pressure to change it. Or like people make a comment of like, what are you gonna do with your hair? People have said that recently, and like I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for the camera. You know what I'm saying? Don't touch it. I love it. I love the afro. It fits your face, your features. Thanks. You're, you're gorgeous. Don't touch it. And I mean, you. unless unless you're gonna go with you know with a bigger afro or smaller afro, I, some I, no, keep it natural, whatever you do. But I like the way it is. I love the way it is. Yes, yeah, somebody said it. I'm Taino and Nigerian. That is my heritage, and I'm also Spanish on my dad's side as well. But um, did the DNA test. So Wait a minute. Your mom is from Nigeria. No, no, no. Well, her, her we are ancestry is not Jewish. Yeah, we are descendants of trafficked Americans who were enslaved in this country. So, unfortunately, we don't have connection to like I don't know my tribe yet, but I want to know. But I know it's not, like it says Nigerian. Whatever the data says, I don't know. So let me ask you this: When you are asked, and to me, it's obvious, like like you just see a regular sister. Like I don't see any. You know what I mean? I'm not confused at all when I look at you, who you are. But when, but for those people who, for whatever reason, may seek to question your racial heritage, what do you tell them you are? I'm Black Puerto Rican. Okay. Okay. I'm it makes sense to me. And where you base that, my queen? Where you base that? I'm Black, but I mean, it's the, what's more accurate is what I said, Taino, Nigerian. Like, if you want to get down to it, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I got you. But Nigeria is a nationality, not a race. Taino is an ethnicity, not necessarily a race. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and the ethnicities are the rivers. The ethnicities are the rivers that drain into the ocean. 
the ocean is the race the rivers and streams are the ethnicities so when somebody say i'm puerto rican right well you really black, black yeah neither one of those are a race puerto rican is a nationality you understand so yeah. those are the rivers but we got to make sure we tie them into the ocean where you base that good system i'm in nashville nashville tennessee i'm supposed to be coming to nashville to do a live podcast interview so I may be coming there soon, but I'll keep you posted on that. But thank you so much for tapping in. Uh, enjoy the wisdom, sweetheart. All right now. Peace and love to you, Queen. Peace. Okay. I got to take a quick restroom break, and I'm coming right back. Quick water break. King Kong will be right back for the next tap in. King Kong is back. Who my next tap in? Who my, my next tap in? King Kong. Who tapping in, family? We got 30 minutes. I got to get ready to check out the hotel. Who tapping in? Sister Raven going once. Sister Raven going twice. How are you? Peace and love, love, Sister Raven. Where, where you at in the world, my sister? I am in Memphis, Tennessee. How are you? Memphis, Tennessee. I work you just at a had natural. Salon. Now we got Memphis. All right. What, what's yes, your thoughts, Sister Raven? Hi, natural uh, hair. First, why y'all not wearing it? Yes, why aren't first, black women top, working together? Why y'all competing and why we not respecting the elders? Okay. Okay. Um, first, I want to tap into the natural hair aspect. Of course, I'm a licensed cosmetologist. I work in Memphis, Tennessee. Got my client right, right here. Her name is Donna. Right. Yes. Hey, Donna. Um, um, so I do want to address that. I do think it's like a, a mental health issue when it comes to like African-American women not choosing to wear their hair. Um, as you see, I do have on a wig right now myself. And I do feel like I struggle with wearing my natural hair and being comfortable with my natural hair. I'm a hairstylist and I still struggle with it. So I do think it's something deeply rooted, especially from childhood. It's like, you know, the process of us not, of us getting our hair high combed and straightened by our parents at such an early age. And it's basically saying that it's our natural hair isn't, it isn't accepted. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. So I do feel like that's something that as African American women we deeply struggle with. Like, it's like embedded you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i'm not making an excuse for me wearing wigs but i know it's something internal that i feel like i'm not as accepted or as beautiful in society standards if i'm wearing my natural hair powerful well said yes um but i did want to address something as well far as uh, the black agenda when it comes yeah. to this presidential election yes how do we get people in our area and basically in the whole world to stick to one agenda like do we need to have like a national press conference and we have to list five different things that we all can agree on because i'm trying to figure out like as black people we're not monolithic like we all have different things that we feel like is important to us so how can we all get on one page because i was literally in my notes the other day and i was trying to write down a list of things that i feel like is important to me but how can i say that that's important to the next black person that's a good point, good sister. I think the problem is when you're dealing with the presidential election, I think, unfortunately, black people 
have been manipulated into identifying as Democrat as opposed to simply looking at the Democratic Party as an option or a tactic. We identify with them. So we feel like we are Democrat. I agree with that because yeah, even yeah, as yeah. a child, I used to see my grandmother and they always like, they voted Democrat, they voted Democrat, they voted Democrat. Even before I was able to understand what Democrat and Republican was, it was just known in the household, oh, we voting for whoever is Democrat. They never, I never heard them discuss issues on why they wanted to vote for the Democratic Party. It was just like black people do Democrat my whole life. And as I'm getting older, I'm kind of pushing back from that because I don't know if it's the internet, but I'm like suspicious of anyone, black or white. Like, yes, yes. You're African American. I believe, like what you were saying about the black bourgeoisie, they want to push their agendas for, yep. but not thinking about the lower man. Yes. So, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out, like, what all, what, what should I be telling my people around me that we should get on route for? Well said. Let me ask you a question, Queen, on the black male female relationship front. Mm -hmm. What are the three things that you think black women would appreciate more from black men? Like when y'all look at us and the way we treat y'all or don't treat y'all, what we do, what we don't do, how we feel, don't feel, communicate, don't communicate. What are three things that if black men just did them a little bit more for black women, you think that the communication and the quality of the relationship would improve drastically? I feel like security is the number one aspect. What do you mean by security? Making a woman feel safe. And safety is going to come from like different aspects of different things. As far as like, I want to know that the man that I'm with is going to care for me like genuinely. So like the little things like far as like, I don't want to make it like monetarily wise, but like just little things about like, if I if I feel like, if I'm telling you, if I'm talking to him, I'm like, hey, my, my gas tank on you. You know, I'm at work all day. Why won't you just come pick up my car and give me some gas? You know what I'm saying? Uh, go you, an like, extra mile sometimes. Yeah, just go the can. extra mile. But also, like I said, every woman wants to feel safe. They want to feel protected. They want to feel like, like I, I have a two-year-old son. So when I, when I got pregnant with my son, my significant other at the time, I kind of had a, a perception of how I thought it should be. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be able to work for a couple of months. I want to know that I can rely on my partner to handle my bills and take care of the things that I need him to take care of so I can be stress-free in raising my son. Yeah. But, and that's a part of safety. Women, black women can be perceived as so hard and tough. It's not that we want to be, it's because we have to be, because we don't have anyone to really lean on when we really need it. You know wow, what I'm wow. Like, that's part when it's like, okay, you be here when I'm up, but like, I really need you when I'm down. And I got you when I'm down, I can't rely on you. So, if I can't rely on you, I'm never gonna try to. I'm always gonna make sure I have it all together. Let me ask you a caveat question to your response there. What about your non romantic male friends? My question is, sisters tend to have non romantic male friends, are they a source of support or is it not the same as a romantic part tell me about the difference other than the sex obviously there's nothing intimate with your nine romantic partners but can they can they provide the same level of support or is it just not the they same they can they actually can they actually can i have guy best friends and i teeter with me dating guys and i tell them that i have a guy best friend that i know that if i need anything i can call him and he'll be right there I really do. I can't even say that. Like my guy friends, most of my guy friends, if I call them, they're gonna come. If I got a flat tire on the side of the road, they'll come. Non romantic. Just friends. Can I please ask you a question? <laughs> she said she wants to ask. Hey, I'm getting my hair done right now. I just want to say, why is it that a lot of black men, if it's not romantic, they treat you better as a friend than when they are romantic with you? I, I agree with that. They I treat you that. way better if you're just a friend with them than if you are romantic with them. I wanted to understand that a little more. Well, I, I think, and I'm going to see what some of the other brothers think, but for me, I think there's a couple reasons. Number one, many men, men present themselves one way when they are on the prowl, mm -hmm. when they are on the hunt, 
when they are in pursuit. That's one personality. Okay. Once they achieve their objective, once they have conquered that that the object of their desire, the real them comes out. Right. So it's not that they switched up, is that they took off the mask. Right. That, they that, that, that's, that's, that's one. And then you also have to look at the aspect of narcissism. Black mm. men suffer from narcissism. Heterosexual black men right. suffer from narcissism because there's not enough of us to go around. And that narcissism often blinds us to what we're not doing in our relationship because the narcissism has us feeling like you should be happy I'm even in your life because right. most women don't have a man. You should be happy that you even have me to sleep next to at night because mm -hmm. most women have an empty bed. So a lot of us think being present, being present no. is sufficient. Mm -hmm. We never even get to the accountability. We never even get to the reciprocity. You should be happy simply because I am here. Right. And that is that narcissistic piece that black men really need to confront. And if he is a high earning black man, it can get even worse sometimes right. because now he might feel like you should literally be worshiping him because of what he's bringing into your life. Humility is something black men need to work on with our women. And we have to stop making y'all feel insecure about the fact that it's not enough of us to go around. In other words, if you're going to be there for her, be there for her. And if you're not going to be there for her, let her know that so she can decide if she wants to stay or go. But once again, going back to that narcissism, we might not necessarily want you the way you want us, but we can't stand to see somebody have right. you the way you wanted me to have you. And yeah. that's that self selfishness that'll keep you emotionally tied up until you get strong enough to realize that this is not what's going to serve your best interests. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot, I ladies. Y'all keep on doing what you're doing, my beautiful sweet brown sugar, my beautiful caramel. Go thank ahead, Queen. You was going to say something else. I have a young son that's two years old. And of course, uh, I don't live close by where your university is going to be. But what are some things that you feel like I should start instilling in my child right now? two years old literacy is everything okay. slow down on the toys pick up the books slow down on the cartoons pick up the books make him read to you you read to him make sure he lives in a world of literacy because your son's vocabulary is going to quadruple between two and five our biggest spurt in vocabulary growth is between two and five now think about what most black kids are doing between two and five toys TV, video games, uh-uh, books, books, and more books. You have to feed that vocabulary growth so your son will already be a well-smoked, a well-spoken black man before he even walks into kindergarten. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thanks a lot, ladies. Y'all be safe. Okay. Thank you All so right, much. beautiful. Thank you. Indeed. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, let me tap into the male, the male kingdom. Where the brothers at one time? Where the unapologetically African anti snow bunny alpha males? Let me get me your brother. Where my brother at going once? My brother at going twice. Where you at, King? Okay. Brother Merv, where you at, Brother Merv? Brother Merv, where you at, Brother Merv? Going once, going twice, where you at? Doc. Peace King, where you at in the world? Orlando, Florida. How we doing? I'm doing well, my brother. Well, you just heard the sister. She said we're not making the Queens feel secure. She said once we start dating them, we don't treat them, excuse me, once we get physical with them, we don't treat them the same way we treat them when we were just platonic friends. 
What's your take on the black male female relationship situation? And what's your opinion on election 2024 between Agent Orange and Scamala Harris? Uh, honestly, you know, I'm a, um, I'm a big fan of you, Doc. And I see everything on TikTok, man. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, it's two wrongs. It's two wrongs. It's, it's no good side. And I feel like, you know, you, you made a good picture on that. You, like you painted both sides correctly. So, you know, I, I really can't say like I have an opinion or true size on any of that. Like, okay. I really don't, you know, I, like, you know, like about Trump, what he said about the, um, but about the immunity, like I can't go with that. Like I can't, you know, like that's something crazy about you know the recent killing of uh. So I forgot Massey. Him, Sonya Massey, yeah, Sonya Massey. So um, and about the about the, what is it? What is it? I'm a little nervous uh, right now. My election. Bad dog. <laughs> or, or, yeah. or, the, or the black man, black woman. Oh yeah, about the black man, black woman. So about that one there, that's true. Cause I'm, you know, like. You know, I'm in my twenties, like around this time, like, you know, there's a lot of people who put facades and stuff like that when they want to get to know somebody or like, you know, you know, when they're trying to get the cookies, like they're not going to show who they really are. So I, you know, that's, that's something that, that most men in my generation, that's what they do. They really don't lead with their true intentions. They really just put on that mask and they, um, they just, they just go for the cookies. That's what it's about really nowadays and um about the yeah about the politics man um about that there like i said kamala harris i didn't really like what she was doing like you know bringing like all of the black celebrities i remember you were speaking about that too you were speaking about that like uh bringing the celebrities like putting like a facade and her being like for the black community like, I, I really, like, she didn't really speak on, like, what she would be doing with, like, the black community, like, giving right. us jobs. Like, you know, we need to build that structure that we have within, like, the black community. So, you know, like, I didn't really hear that from her. So, you know, I'm not really on any side, really. I got you, brother. Thanks for tapping in, King. Be safe down there. Yeah, take care. Take care. Right. Hey, bro. Who tapping in? tapping in who tapping in sister z going once sister z going twice sister z where you at okay is this sister z timed out cancel that who tapping in? Who tapping in? Missy Melanin going once. Missy Melanin going twice. Where you at, Queen? I need to see you. We can't talk if I can't see you, babe. Missy Melanin. Ellen and I need to see you, Queen. Where you at, Empress? You laying in the bed looking up at the ceiling? No, I'm not laying in the there bed. You go. I'm there right. you go. How you doing, Queen? I'm doing good. You How are you? In the world. I'm in Long Island, New York. Long Island, Strong Island, New York. I love you so much. Like, I'm like, I've been listening to you since I was a teenager. Like, oh, I'm starstruck right now. I I appreciate you, Queen. I appreciate you. What's your take on the black women issues? Uh, everything from the competition to the hair to not respecting the elderly black women. What's your take? Um, so I guess I can start with hair. Um, I feel that we should be able to wear our natural hair more, but I also feel like it's not accepted enough. Okay. I wear my natural hair a lot, and when I do, um, I always get comments, even within my family, and they'll try to say things like, um, you need your hair done. So, and then, like, when I put when I put a wig on or something, then, you know, I'm more socially accepted. So, I mean, I definitely think that there should be some changes. Like, I feel like we need to be able to love ourselves more. Yes. Yeah. And why do you think Black women are not uniting with each other 
to create systems and structures that will benefit black women what where's the organization amongst the sisterhood what's keeping black women from unifying um i think that um we want to unify even me personally i started doing women's empowerment brunches which are um consist of mainly black women and um i think that we want to i just think that we don't have enough people who are willing to like create movements and like you know, try to support one another. I think everybody's just wrapped up into their own life. Mm -hmm. this, yeah, I think that we don't have enough people who are willing to be leaders. Gotcha. And what's your take on election 2024? You know, Scamala, Agent Orange, certain people trying to shame black people into voting, even though neither one of them is saying anything that's relevant to black people. Where do you stand? So um, I pretty much don't want to vote for anyone because um, Kamala Harris, she's really not, you know, trying to do anything for black people, period. And then I just think Donald Trump is racist. So I don't, I don't really know if I'm gonna vote yet. I'm still thinking about it, but I do wanna exercise my, my right to vote, but I don't, I don't really wanna vote for either one of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you for tapping in my beautiful African queen. And I want you to go natural. You got that beautiful nose, them big, pretty eyes, that cocoa brown skin, that gorgeous smile. Get you a baby fro. Get you some locks. Get you some twisties. Get no, you a No, my Caesar. natural hair is beautiful. My natural hair is beautiful. Mm -hmm. I always wear it. Like, I literally just put it in the wig, like, for a protective style, just to, like, okay. let my hair rust a little bit. But, yeah. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> okay. Next time I see you, I want to see that natural. Please come to Long Island soon i'm working on it too i might be there next month i'll keep you posted okay. all right beautiful right. be safe king kong consciousness king kong consciousness Uh, no, thank you. I'll be checking out at one. Peace, King. How's it going, my brother? What's up, dog? Oh, man, it's an honor, man, to be oh, able to speak to you, Where you at, good brother? I'm all the way in uh, Waldorf, Maryland. Waldorf, Maryland. Well, I spoke there two years ago. Yes, sir, down oh, yeah. in Waldorf. Yes, indeed, brother. Talk to That's me. What's your up. take on the black male-female relationship situation? What's your take on election 2024? All right, so getting to the uh, relationship situation, I think um, it's unfortunate that black women are very um, manipulative. Okay. So with them being manipulative, they give me an example of that. Give me, give me one example of black female manipulation. Give me something you've seen or heard of. I mean, I think just in general, man, with like you know, black men like just having like that skill of being a player. They know how to say the right words to get women to be able to succumb to certain things. And oh, okay. You yeah. said the men are manipulative, not the women. You said the men. Yeah, exactly. I said so. Women, women are very easy to be uh, manipulated. Okay. Okay. Yes. Go ahead, Ken. I got you. I got mm -hmm. you. Yep, so um, yeah, women are very easy to be manipulated. I think if they enter the situation of coming in with some type of standard, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Even also presenting themselves in a more elegant and, you know, woman-like manner, then men wouldn't be so easy to approach them in a certain way or to come as aggressive with that urge to have sex and, like, you know, not respect their decisions, if you will. Well said. Well said. What do we need to work on as black men with women other than the manipulation? We obviously need to stop that, but what's something else we need to work on? You heard the sister earlier said that we don't often make them feel protected, secure. We're not very thoughtful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just being present is enough for a lot of black men. You know, just be happy that I'm with you type of energy. What's your thoughts on mm -hmm. that? So I think for one, man, like, you know, black men, we just really like a lot of good role models within our community. Like even like, especially like for us young black men growing up in the inner city, like, you know, we 
tend to look up to like you know the guys getting money like the dope dealers and like they pushing the message up like you know having like tons of excuse my french uh, tons of bitches and like you know getting money and stuff like that so that tends to be enticing to the young male since it's so enticing to the young male that's the mindset we carry you know a lot of men in the inner city lacking fathers you know good fathers that they're in their home or good older brothers to teach them hey this is how you appropriately approach a woman and things like that um this is how you uh, appropriately ask a woman out so those things matter you know what i mean and also like we have to see that example so we don't see you know our moms and our older sisters being treated with respect by like you know strong black men then we don't have that example in front of us to be able to mimic well so said I think, I, well I said I think, you know strong black role models is very important well said um your, your, what's your opinion on election 2024? Kamala Trump voting, not voting. What's your opinion on, on, on the whole circus going on? Man, so we all know absolutely, man, um, Donald Trump is just, you know, clueless, ignorant, no political IQ at all. He pushes the agenda of, I think, um, preserving for the rich. I think that's his whole agenda. I think the um, full police immunity is absolutely insane. So we definitely no good voting for him. Um, I think Kamala Harris being a Democrat isn't helpful as I think the Democratic Party hasn't been like too beneficial to the black community over the years at all. But I think if Kamala Harris was to get elected, I think she would have more pressure to actually present change in the black community more than Obama did. And I say that because she's a woman, not only for her being black because she's a woman. And I think I feel you. Because, also, because she also has like that proximity to, you know, the celebrities like the Taraji Hansons and like the other black elite celebrities because she has that relationship and that proximity. I think they'll hold her to a higher standard and hold her more accountable. OK, I, I think okay. the accountability will be held more on her. And so I think there will be more pressure on her to actually bring about change in the black community if she was to get elected. But as of right now, she hasn't shown me a whole lot or spoken out on the whole lot as far as what she would do in the black community, but I just hope that changes. Well said, my brother. Thanks for tapping in, man. Be safe down there. Thank right, you too, man. Thank you, right, King. No doubt. Well, well spoken, articulate young black brother. Glad to see that. Glad to see that. Glad to see that. Glad to see that. Glam Zavant going once, Glam Zavant going twice. Hold on. How we doing there, beautiful? Hey, how are you? All right, love the natural hair, love the natural hair. Where you based that, my queen? I'm in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I was there two, two years ago. I only spoke in Oklahoma City twice. So I need to come back because Oklahoma yes, City, do. I was just in Tulsa for Black Wall Street, yeah. but I got to hit up Oklahoma. What is your take on the natural hair situation, black women not sticking together situation, black on black love, the brothers and the sisters? Talk to me. Um, I think, go, go. <laughs> I think that um, the natural hair, um, as, as most have already said, it's more of a confidence thing, you know? I grew up, I remember with perms just because everybody else had them. Okay. And when I finally realized my natural state, what it was, I was like, oh, this is cool, you know? And I haven't had one since, but I didn't grow up with my natural hair. Like they put okay. a perm in it just because, you know, it wasn't my choice, right? Okay. So I think it's more of like a um, confidence, you know, they're comfortable or not. I mean, it is easier to not be natural, but like I said, um, um, I don't know. For me, it's just because it's easy to be okay. natural to me. <laughs> some say it's easier not to be natural, but I think it's easier to be natural. I mean, you just put some oil and some water and you just go on about your business. Especially as a single mom, you know, raising, you know, I don't have time. Yes, my, my natural is beautiful, so I'm okay. So I guess it's just the confidence. It's a personal issue, each woman. You well, know? let me ask you this then. Because I've heard a lot of sisters say the reason they don't wear their natural hair is it takes too much time to manage it. And right, take that's care what of I'm it. saying. So it, it's individual. Because for me, that was the reason why I stay natural, because it's easier. Right, but you're saying it's easier. 
I can first be natural. used to say it's more difficult right. to be natural. So like I said, for each person, it's their own, okay. you okay. know, okay. take on it. But for me, it's you. easier to be natural. Talk to me about Black women sticking together. Why you think there's not more unity amongst the sisterhood? I think because, um, for one, it's I think it's something that has to be taught, you know? OK. Um, and, you know, we grow up with around our moms gossiping, you know? Like, I remember growing up and just hearing conversations about, other women you know so it's something okay. that definitely has been taught but i think as we get older it becomes competition i commented men i think we are because like i said it's a slim pickings and so you know when it comes it's kind of like survival of the fittest you know like okay it's just something that we naturally go into survival mode you know okay now with the black male female relationships i heard you mention you as a single mom, without going too deep into your personal business, because we are live, generally speaking, why are you not with the father of the children? Um, was it infidelity? Was it a lack of trust? Was it irresponsibility? Was it just not a good match and neither one of you was at fault? Like, where do you, why is there such a disconnect between the brothers and the sisters? Um, for my, my oldest son, I have two. Mm -hmm. So the first son, it was just trust. Okay. I was married. And so, uh, uh, yeah. And, um, the second child, um, it's just the lack of responsibility. Like just, that's just it. What? There's nothing else I can think of besides you just don't want to. And, and, and you have two boys. Correct. So let me ask you this. As you raise them, based on your experiences with black men romantically, what is one or two things you will definitely instill in your sons as it relates to their relationships with women that you feel you did not get from their father? Like, what is something you want to make sure my son does this or understands this with women? to make sure that he's benefiting them and not being a liability? Um, for one, his job is to protect and provide. Like you are a provider at all costs, no matter what you are to provide for the foundation, for your family or for your woman, whoever you choose to be that to be. And this is no snow bunny zone over here. Trust and believe uh, I will instill that in them as well. Uh, They'll be scared to bring us nobody home. They be scared of their mama. No, mom's not no, because it's not gonna happen. Got you, got you. you. My last that. my last question for you, beautiful. The election. Where, 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 where you standing at with the Kamala Trump, the whole circus? What's your take? Well, I'm a Jehovah's Witness, so I don't vote. But well, let me ask you. My grandmother was Jehovah Witness, rest of so Jehovah Witnesses don't vote. That's a policy. I didn't know that. I don't think it's a policy, but I mean, it's something that we we learn like it's a um something that we learn i mean you can do what you want by all means you do what but, you okay, want to but do. voting is not encouraged it's not encouraged okay right okay, but you're, you're not you won't get in trouble for voting no you won't it's get just in not, for not encouraged it's just not encouraged right i didn't know that i i never knew that me and my grandma never spoke on voting i never knew yeah that. nothing is never like a policy you know it's just this is you when you're when you are taught you know, or given a study, you, you this can become your belief because you're taught, like you read it in the Bible, you know, and so you learn these things. So when you get baptized, like that's your belief. So it kind of becomes part of you, like a lifestyle, you know. Let me ask you a devil's advocate question. You ready for this? Go ahead. I, I know some Jehovah Witnesses queens. I've only met, I've only dated one in college though. They can be a bit, y'all can be a bit rigid, inflexible because of the strictness of the Jehovah Witness doctrine. My devil's advocate question for you, sister. Were, were you a bit too rigid and strict with the fathers of your sons <laughs> and did that cause some of the issues in the relationship? <laughs> I just had to ask because I didn't know you was a Jehovah <laughs> Witness. Like, 
Is that religion Absolutely carrying too not. much weight in that home? Absolutely not. Because at the end of the day, like my grandmother gave me a choice. Like when she raised me, I wasn't raised Jehovah's Witness. So I went to Baptist churches, Church of Christ. You know, as long as we went to church, it was fine. Mm -hmm. So when I met my husband at the time, I said, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. This is what I believe. You can do what you want, but this is what I do. And he actually started learning and wanting to know more. And, you know, he never got baptized, but he, you know, it, we, we, like, I told him that we need to be on the, like, we need to know spiritually. Ha something spiritual has to lead us. You know what I'm saying? And, and I told him straight up, I'm not looking for a boyfriend. I'm looking to get married. Like, this is what I want to do. So, you know, and then that, so he's not a witness. But he know, he's been around. He knows enough to know, you know. Got you, got you. Thanks for tapping in, my queen. I look forward to seeing you in OKC one yes, day. Yes, absolutely. All You're right. welcome. Have a great day. Be safe. You too now. Shout out to the Jehovah Witness Queens, but you know y'all be on 100 sometimes. Shout out to the Jehovah Witness Queens, but you know y'all be on 100 sometimes. <laughs> 